And we're here at the National Sports Center, the FA Cup final between the Devonshire Cougars and the Somerset Eagles. Score at the start of the second half is 2-0 to the Somerset Eagles. Goals being scored by Kishan Bean and the young maestro himself, Mr. Troy Tucker. It looked as if the first half was going to go into a scoreless half, but two goals inside of four minutes by the boys in yellow and blue. See, is now a tough mountain to climb for the boys in white and green from across the way, the Devonshire Cougars. We'll see if the tactics will change from the Cougars. They will be a little bit more clinical in the finishing. Ball hits the post. Somehow ricochets off the post. Beautiful turn by the veteran Zoo. Thomas beaten as he dove full length. Ball looked like it was going to drift over the goal line, but came across the goal. And I believe there's still another two or three goals in this match. So as the intent by the Cougars has signaled that some City Eagles will have to fight to the end of this match to take this coveted BFA FA Cup trophy, the first one for both teams, back to White Hill. But at the moment, it's still Eagles who are closer to winning this inaugural trophy on their behalf instead of Devonshire Cougars. Tucker. The Shields, Russell, the Shields. Foul called by match official O'Brien, who's had a decent first half. And we see Russell and Davis over the ball. Russell walks away and leaves it to Davis. Davis strikes, but the ball just rolls slowly to Keeper Brangman, he sends a long kick to Zul. With Eagles having gone ahead 2-0, will this be a signal that the times are changing and Drake? That will be the young Troy Tucker against the teacher Steve. Has Tucker signaled his arrival on the senior scene? Tucker and Bean combining. Tucker, Franks. Franks has to come out. Brengman has to come out. But will it be Tucker who will be signaling his arrival on the senior scene by having scored the second goal for the Eagles? So will the teacher Steve indicate to Tucker that he still has a few years to wait before he can take his crime as. His title is Bermuda's most dynamic midfielder. Bean. That is B. Again, Seymour. Finds Lambert. Lambert, who likes to dribble. Still in possession. Finds Tucker. Tucker. Bean. Russell. Russell tries to turn it away, but still. <coughs> O'Brien calls back, but it could have been a battle for an advantage if Cougars were going forward at the moment, but still, Cougars in possession. Steed hustles, looking to bring his team back into the match. Looking for that goal to make it 2-1, which will send the Olay boys wild here at the National Sports Center. Butterfield crosses. Ball falls to Cottington. Cottington unable to apply any pressure. Davis. Sends a long ball into Russell. Missed by Cox. Durling. Bean. Bean playing wide now. Drifting to his right. Russell. Russell drew the legs of Seymour. Seen by O'Brien. O'Brien on top of the play. Excellent referee. And it seems like the Eagles have grown in confidence. Playing a little bit more fluid. But they must be guilty of not being caught in possession as there's a Good counter-attack with the speedy Connington. And the veteran Sewell is always in a good position. Davis. Easily seen by Brangman. There's a good crowd here at the National Sports Center. As we had three matches here earlier in the day. 
two matches. Samus is under-14s, we're crowned the under-14 knockout champions. And the Devonshire Cougars are already having won one trophy today in the under-16 division. But the main trophy, the FA Cup, is what all supporters here are looking for. And the youngsters that were successful in the under-14, under-16 are dreaming of being here on the carpet, as we call it. Being able to say they were in the FA Cup final and the winners. But now it's doling. Doling holds possession. Slows to play down. The Shields. Russell. Bean. Russell drifts away. Russell sitting in possession. Butterfield was there. Davis. Davis slow to react. Steed. Steed looking for Cotterton. Andre tries to find Tucker. Seymour. The main seat at the number 10. Brangman. Sprays the ball out wide to Butterfield. Butterfield having acres of space. Goes down the line. Sends another ball high into the box. Zool. Tucker. Steed on the edge of the 18. Tries to send it across the box. Bean. Strong challenge by Cox. O'Brien over there again. Base play on. Durling not happy with that challenge. It's Butterfield again. Butterfield resorts to another long cross. Be better for Butterfield maybe to go down the line or get a little bit closer to the 18 before sending in a cross. Andre one time into Bean. Bean tries to turn away. Beautiful. Durling. Andre. Outside of the boot. Looked as if Bean was going. O'Brien base play on. Tucker. Andre becoming more influential, the fullback getting involved in the play. Russell. Top. Steed. Cunnington. The Shields. Andre. Durling. Tucker. Andre. We see both sets of coaches on the edge of the 18. Sean Smith deputizing for Kwame to play a coach. He's on his technical area. And Kenny Thompson is again also on the edge of his area. Looking to win the FA Cup for his coveted Somerset Eagles. Part of his family tradition. His father having been part of the Somerset Bridge Recreation Club. And that was a shot by Sean Brangman. And as we just passed the 50th minute mark here, it's still 2-0 to the Eagles. Cougars are playing very direct, looking to get an early goal to bring themselves back into the match. But at the same time, we have the Eagles who also, having opened up the pitch with Kishan Bien, having drifted out wide right at times. Bean. Lambert. Steed. Side foots it in to Tucker. Thomas jumps. Quick release to Lambert. You see the hustle of Zoo. You see the intent of the Cougars. Durling, Durling gets there. Brangman, excellent goalkeeping, quick to react. Brangman also a wicket keeper for the Devonshire Recreation Club. Ball out to Durling, but Durling was in an offside position. Signaled by AR. And Cougars will be looking to restart quickly. Andre. Eagles just linking up a little bit better into the start of the second half. The two-goal lead allows him to try to play a little bit more control football. Russell sends one long, being chased by Tucker. Seymour. Steed. Steed still finding acres of space in the middle of the park, but not being able to penetrate as much as he likes. He's in the wrong end of the field when he tries to open up the play. Lambert. Tucker, still in possession. Followed there by Battersby. Durling comes back. Ball into the 18. Skipper Seymour. Tucker. Very impressed by Tucker. Always looking for the outlet. Durling. Durling who's drifted out to the left now. Davis. 
Central in the middle of the park. She pressed it out wide to Andre. Miss control, but we see the total team work of the Eagles. Russell sends one in. We see Brangman who's shouting orders to his troops to get back into the match. Calling for teamwork. Zool. Andre unable able just to get us to the ball. Steed turns away, finds Connaughton. Connaughton's beautiful turn. Russell. Russell working hard. The Shields. And the moment it's a turtle team effort off the Somerset Eagles. Connaughton. Sh tries a shot. Ball goes to the edge of 18. Back to Zoo. To Thomas. Ooh! Unbelievable! Here in the 55th minute of play, somehow the ball beats Thomas. He was unable to go into the bottom left of the goal. If the Cougars come away from the dam without the FA Trophy, they will be just thinking that it was not their day today as they have had the better chances, even though the Eagles have scored twice. Cougars have had more than six clear-cut opportunities to put the ball into the back of the net. Davis. Turns away from Steed. And we see Butterfield trying to keep the ball in play, but it's via driving into the Eagles. Coach Thompson has sent his substitutes to warm up. Could be indicating a change of tactics. And at the moment, all of the Cougars subs are still seated. As Cougars are looking to get back into the match with the 11, which they started with. Steed. Out wide to Seymour. Seymour being met by the Shields. Plays in Connaughton. Connaughton there with the veteran Seymour. Connaughton gets for Seymour. Into the 18. Seymour puts his toe to it. Corner. First corner of the second half, awarded to the Devonshire Cougars. If Cunnington trying to race across the byline into the 18, but it's the ever attend skipper, Denver Seymour Jr. Dio, as he's called by his um, fans. Good tracking. And it's now Tumani taking the kick. And it's Steed on the edge of the 18. Brangman sends the ball across. Zul, somehow the ball is blocked. Unbelievable. Zul is not having his day here today. This must be the direct clear opportunity for Zul. Zul is normally a one you can count off to put the ball in the back of the net, having scored multiple times as a Bermuda player, Bermuda Hawks player, Devonshire Colts, and Devonshire Cougars as well over the years. And today he's unable to find the back of the net thus far. Brangman. Seymour, met by Andre. Tumani tries to dance over the ball, but Davis holds his ground as the veteran, clears his line. Cougars throwing everything forward after we've passed the 55th minute mark. Zul on the edge of the 18, looks ahead. No one trailing Zul. Just not his day today. Just not his day today. Cougars come again. Eagles are forced back. Mistimed by. Seymour, and again, Zoo unable to direct it with any power. It may be that the Cougars just need to play someone else there up top, maybe a different player who would have some more luck in front of Gill. Because at the moment, all of six yards and closer, Zoo is unable to get his foot to the ball to direct it just into the net. Foul awarded to Cougars. A foul given by Doling. Coddington to Sewell again. Ball dropped to to Maine Steed after Zul was able to notch it on and just drifted off the near post. That would have been a clinical goal, a a la Van Basten in the 1988 European Cup final. But those only come every 20 years or so. But the Eagles are being pushed back into their onto the six yard line. They will have to come out and meet the ball as the farther you go back to goal, you are giving the opposing team 
more opportunities to put the ball into the net. Steed working hard. Looking for it. Tucker. Tucker slides one across. It's Steed. Steed finally gets one in. And it's 2-1 here to the Cougars. In the 58th minute of the match, 59th minute of the match, the maestro, the veteran Kwame Steed puts the Cougars back into contention as he's looked for Tumaini Steed or why Steed actually did his job that time, the other Steed Tumaini drifted the ball back into the 18 and the on rushing Kwame Steed who build up the play brings the Cougars back to the match as I said earlier, will it be the youth of Troy Tucker signaling his arrival or will it be the veteran now Seymour crosses oh too many Steed finds himself on the edge of the box again crosses over Sue play on by O'Brien is all Cougars it's all Cougars at the moment the Eagles having come back into the second half of a 2-0 lead team shall suck and it's only a matter of time, I believe, before the score is drawn level. What a FA Cup final here today at the National Sports Center. What a FA Cup final. What a FA Cup final. Both teams looking to bring this trophy home to their set of supporters. And at this moment, we are unable to tell you who it will be. It's now the Cougars having taken full control of this match. With Less than a half an hour to play in regulation time. It's 2-1 to the Eagles. But it's all Devonshire Cougars. Franks. Tucker. It's the Eagles unable to maintain possession. And Cougars looking to string together passes now. Brangman. Will Coach Thompson be looking to make a switch? Long kick. Ooh, almost flicked on by Sue to Steed. As I said, to, for Steve to be more influential, Kwame Steed, he has to play higher into the final dart of the opposing team. He is now left to defend into his back four and is now into the part of the pitch where we know him best, where he can dice and slice open opposing defenses. Play on by Brangman, by O'Brien. Steed shoots again. Good layoff there by Cotterton. But Steed, it's all Steed. Kwame Steed is seeing every ball which is being touched by them Cougars. Some city Eagles somehow are going to have to find a solution to that. Cougars are opening up the pitch. It's all the Eagles cramped in their half. Tucker. And it's Adolphus Lambert who wins the tackle and gets to draw in. Looks like there's going to be a substitution for the Eagles. I believe it looks like number 24 will be coming on shortly. Damon Swan, a tough tackling central midfielder who will be looking to disrupt the attacking flow of the Cougars at the moment. He will have 28 minutes to ensure that his team do not give away another goal. Doling. Play on by O'Brien. Doling looks like he took a slap to the face. And it's again. Tumaini Steed crosses for Zul. Zul goes to play. Oh! Somehow it's not Zul's day. Tumaini Steed having crossed the ball. Zul having calmly composed himself and put his foot to side foot into the bottom of the net. But Zul is having no luck today. As I said earlier, it may require a simple substitution. Troy Tucker is being taken out of the match. It seems that Cougars, the Eagles are going for control over Flamboyant. And Damon Swan will be now charged to take control of Kwame Steed. Troy Tucker having done his job so after, with 26 minutes left to play. The first substitution of the match is Damon Swan replacing Troy Tucker. Bean. Russell, Russell are wide. Unable to keep the ball in play.
Brangman, Connaughton, Steve. Brangman remains on the ground. Keeper goes out wide. As I said earlier, Cougars are opening up the pitch now, trying to pull apart the midfield of the Eagles. Zoo. Seymour. Swans first touching the ball. Sends it into the half of the Cougars. Swan, Swan not known for speed, so if he's made to chase for the remaining 28 minutes, it will be a tough day for him. Steed shoots, blocked by Battersby. Bean hits the back of O'Brien. Ball falls back to the Cougars. Seymour sends one one time. Zul! Unbelievable Zul! Zul must have been thinking about celebrating having brought back Cougars into the match, but somehow he misses the ball on the two yard line. As they say, strikers run hard and cold, and today may be a day where the boys from the Dan will have to make a tactical change and take Cougars off out of the match. He's not having a poor game, but it's not working for him at the moment. It may just require another person there to just place a toe to the ball. If the Cougars come out of this match not victorious, Zul would have to look at himself in the mirror and ask what and why he was unable to do this. A tough clash there. Sees Russell go down. And the Matic. Battersby is brought onto the pitch. We see Coach Thompson and Lowe on the edge of the 18 on the technical area. And the Cougars are coming in as well looking for refreshments. Thompson is there to give some technical information. The same is being done by Smith, Sean Smith, who has been on the carpet a few times for the Cougars trying to win. He covered it FA Cup, but it has been unsuccessful. And now here as a coach, is only looking to do his job to make sure that it doesn't occur this time that the Cougars are unable to walk the trophy back to the Dan, the Cougars Dan. As we look at Russell on the ground, hoping that he is okay, but it would also change, show, make a change of tactics for the Eagles. Eagles having Shakur Smith, number seven, the speedy and unorthodox Smith. And looks like Aquino Grand, number 14, will be the second substitution of the match. It may indicate that Russell will not come back into the match. And Aquino Grand in the 68th minute of the match. Brought on for Russell. So the Eagles have made two subs, and they have one more sub to make. Coach Thompson would have to use that wisely. Davis and Dred, what a lively match here at the National Sports Center. Oh, Ballum is played into a grand, looking for his first touch. Brangman rails the ball cheekily by the grand, rushing. Swan doing his job. That is B. Looking for Andre. Swan. Finds Grant. Played just a little too hard. Grant somehow still gets there. But it's a goal kick is awarded. Looked as if he may have gotten a touch of the ball and pushed it onto the feet of Calx. Cox a little bit complacent, thinking that the ball would have rolled out, but Grand has been brought on to chase. Grand is similar to the style of Irvin Burgess. If you remember, Irvin Burgess, a lively, wily striker who ran for 90 minutes. Aquino Grand will do the same for the Eagles here today. And now it looks like we have the first sub for the Devonshire Cougars. It looks like the youngster for Cougars will be coming on. Lejean Simmons, number 22, is preparing himself here on the touchline. Ball played into Zoo. Zoo heads it back to... 
Sue headed the ball back into Steve. And the Eagles player goes down after Thomas was able to get his hands to the ball first. It's a busy day for the Eagles medical staff as they've been, Battersby has been brought on to rush out there again. And we're getting close to the final 20 minutes of the match. There will definitely be at least some injury time added on as we've seen two Eagles players go down already. Luckily this time it's nothing serious and the match play can resume. And it's good for a play by the Cougars who saw that the ball was kicked out due to injury. The match has been played in good fair play and spirit thus far. And there's going to be a pulsating final 20 minutes here at the Den. The score at the moment is still 2-1 to the Somerset Eagles. Goals scored by Keishan Bean and Troy Tucker. And then Kwame Steed having brought his team back into the match at 2-1. And at the moment, the match is evenly poised and balanced as the Cougars are firing on all cinders. Trying to make it 2-2. And what would that be if it ended up 2-2 with about 10 minutes left to play? Ball back into the box. Again, Zul high, rising high over the much taller Seymour. O'Brien signals the corner, which Cotterton will take. Cotterton. Ball goes high and over the goal. Each opportunity now as we enter the final 20, 20 minutes of the match will have to be taken wisely, especially by the Cougars. And it still looks like Cougars are not going to make a switch as Lejean Jimin has taken his place back on the substitute's bench. Thomas. Big kick by Thomas. Aquino Grand out jumps Seymour. Seymour calling for the ball from the ball boy. But was found guilty of taking the drove in from the incorrect place. And now he's being spoken to by match official O'Brien about his conduct. And then Dre wisely asked where he should take the play, the drove from. Davis. O'Brien allowing the play to flow. Bean, Bean being very quiet in the second half thus far as Cougars on the attack again. Steed. But Lambert is there to react. Davis. Spreads the ball out wide to Andre. Andre finds Grant. Grant pushed in the back by Seymour. Free kick to the Eagles. Seymour. Headed out by Dio's. Daniel Seymour Jr. Andre finds Davis. Davis into being. Swan on the ball. Swan sends a beautiful ball to Grant. Grant is there. Cross is over. Brangman came to the near post. Was able to smother the ball, but unable to stop the ball from carrying over to the line. Grant and Swan, the two substitutes, influential thus far. Swan. Sends one back into the box. Bean. Bean working hard. Pacey Tucker on the far side. Gets crossed Lambert, but sees the ball drift over the byline. Thus far, it seems that the substitution for the Eagles has paid off. That's Swan and Aquino Grand are finally getting into the plate. But still seems as if Cougars are looking the more dangerous of the two. And I wouldn't be surprised if Cougars are able to snatch an equalizer in regulation time. Davis. 
Durling. Durling almost being non existent in the match. But a few. Zoo, beautifully headed on by Zoo. But Dumian carries the ball again. Zoo not having any luck here today. All he's looking for is be able to turn that ball into the net and all will be forgotten. And he will be made to be the hero. That's what strikers do. You can miss 10, but as long as you put in one and it turns out to be the equalizer or the winner, he will be carried on the shoulders of the Cougar supporters across to the Ole Den. Now, Seymour. Cougars increasing the intensity of play, spreading the ball around a little bit faster. Zul again. And to end action. Bean looking for Durling. Durling offside. Durling was given offside by the AR. There was a good goal out of the midfield by Bean. Bean having dropped very deep by using his intelligence and saw that Durling could probably outpace Franks. So the tactics of the Cougars is to leave, isolate Durling against Franks. But Bean is asking for his players to come up, to come deeper, not to be camped into their half. Seymour finds Carterton. Carterton tries to spoon the ball Drew to Zoo. Again, Eagles are very deep. Butterfield has time on the ball. Another corner for the Cougars. This time it looks as if Kovuan Tucker will be given the responsibilities. And it looks like Lamont Brangman, number 24. Corner, had it out. Bean on there, Bean beautifully. Still in possession, Bean all by himself. Nowhere to turn. Foul seen by O'Brien. And it looks as if Lamont Brangman will be coming on for the Cougars. But before that, it's Aquino Grand. Durling, back to Grand. Grand, Hills is Grand. Calls for a penalty, turned away by O'Brien. Nothing given by the AR. Play on. Tucker. Turns inside beautifully. Seymour. Grant is there, as I tell you. Grant is reminiscent of Arvin Burgess. He will work for you. Cougars are pushed back. Butterfield. Butterfield have sent a few crosses into the box. Chooses to do so again. Davis able to chest it down. Substitution will be made. Fresh substitution for the Devonshire Cougars. Will be in the 78th minute of the match. It's Lamont Brangman. Who comes on for Kovan Tucker. Look at this Eagles will be looking to make their final substitution. The number seven, Shakur Smith, is waiting to be put onto the pitch. Interesting who he will come on. Aljimi Sewell now. Sewell again. This must be his sixth opportunity in the six yard box. If the Cougars are unable to equalize or even win this match, they will have to point the fingers towards Zoo, and Zoo will have to wake up tomorrow in the mirror and look at himself and say, How is it possible that I was unable to get onto the score sheet? But he still has time to do so. Darren Durling being taken off here by Coach Thompson. It's Chris Smith being brought on. In the 79th minute. So the tactical approach with Coach Thompson. Coach Thompson is going for speed and aggression as both Aquino Grant and Smith are lively and speedy players, quick to go on the counter. And it seems that the legs of Durling were gone. And now we have a Cougars players down on the edge of the 18. What a FA Cup. 
day it has been thus far for two teams who have not won the trophy as of yet. They have put on quite a performance thus far. Both sets of spectators can feel that they have gotten their money's worth and much more. And for those who did not venture to the sports center, this is definitely one of the times you would have wished you would have been here. This is definitely not a match where it has been a traditional, what we will call a match of all girls. We have seen girls scoring opportunities. We've seen girls. We've seen Miss Girls. We've seen yellow cards. But most importantly, we've seen a game which both sets of players have gone out to win. Grand gets to the first. Loses control. And it's Davis looking to let the ball run out. No, turns it back into Grant. Grant. Still in possession. Pulls on Seymour. Seen by O'Brien. We've now entered the 80th minute. Tuck was unable to get the B in terms of A. But Seymour. Seymour having an uh, excellent match today. Cox. Seeing as Cox is trying to venture forward a little bit more, as the Cougars have realized it doesn't make sense to have four defenders there with all the Eagles forwards in their own half. Seymour. Steed. Turn to base. Seymour. Brangman. Butterfield. Zool. Beautiful into. Coddington, Coddington having switched sides, now having moved from left to right, and to many seed having ventured on to the near side. Lambert, and we see Sir Chris Smith clears lines. Cox clears. Battersby. Tough tackle. Swan. Swan flat footed. Lambert. This is definitely an FA Cup match. The style of play has gone out of the windows. It's all about attacking. It's all about putting the ball into the net. Swan gets there first. Swan looking to find Bean. Good intention. Swan recognizing that he did not have the speed to go past Seymour. Ball played into Brankman. The Shields, the Shields, powerful, the Shields. The Shields looking to find being The Shields again. Butterfield. Butterfield sends one to Cotterton. Cotterton against Lambert. Cotterton gets there. Marshall closely by Lambert. All of the Eagles players in their half except for Bean. Bean going to be the lone man up top. This is end to end action here being brought to you by Bermuda Sports Network. This is Cal Blankendale standing in for Mike Sharp here with Lamone Woods. And what a match it has been thus far. Cotterton will have to use all of his expertise, having had trials in Italy, in the US, played for the Hawks, the Bermuda national team. Brangman onto Steed. Steed shoots. 2 1. Oh! But on the far side, AR. Allen hurls up his flag and Steed is blown offside. But this is signals that the Eagles cannot become complacent. There is now less than seven minutes to play in this FA Cup final without regulation time. Cougars back again. Seymour, Swan, Swan having shared some compares, having slurred the match down, then he's on the ball. Something Coach Thompson would have looked for. Grant, Grant be looking to go down. Grant gets ahead of Seymour. Seymour recovers. Good battle between these two here at the National Sports Center. Franks into Seymour. 
the attend Bean. Foul. Good play by Bean. Franks was guilty of complacency. The supporters of Eagles are going wild here. They feel the FA Cup is there. This is only a few minutes to go here in regulation time. Swarm floats one across the box. But too far, beaten by everyone, she Christmas chases. Eagles return back to regroup. The boys in blue are here. It's unbelievable. Senator Bean is on the edge of his seat. Clasped in his hands, looking towards the sky. As I said earlier, which team will be the first? Zul. Zul tries to play in Cottington. It's just not Zul's day today. But again, all he needs is one goal to put it away. Lambert. Davis, the veteran. Bean. Bean and Franks. Being gets there. Still being. Franks comes out on top of this one. It's been a good battle between those two all day. At the moment, Bean is on top, having scored the opening goal. Battersby. Who held the back line of the Eagles together in the opening half. Long ball in. Mont Brengman. Thomas watches it closely, lets it drift out. And now four minutes and 30 seconds left to go in regulation time. It's Lamont Brengman who is eager to get play restarted. Not allowing the Eagles to waste time. Both sets of supporters are going wild, screaming either for the referee to speed up the match or to book Brengman. Thomas takes his time. Big kick. Had it back by Brangman. The Shields. The Shields. Ball goes out of play. What would it feel like for the youngster, the Shields, all of 17 or 18 years old, to win the FA Cup for the first time to make history at the Somerset Eagles? Cottington. Cottington. Racing. Cottington. Still in possession. Tackled by Lambert. Cox floats one high again. Zul sends it into Brangman. The Eagles back line calling for the offside, but Brangman somehow the usual potency of the Cougars is something that's missing today. Zul calls for it. Zul on his chest. Shoots. Flagged offside there by A.R. Allen. What a match. Two minutes and 40 seconds left in regulation time. The Eagles bench is calling for the supporters to be the 12th man. Again, Seymour. Cougars still looking to play their way into the match. The Shields who clears his line. It's B. B in chases. Shares his speed. Flicks one over. Grant waits. Talked away by Shakur Smith. Ball goes out of play. And to an action. If you were not here today, please go to BermudaSportsNetwork.com and look for footage of this very entertaining match. It's probably the most entertaining match of the 2009-10 season. Battersby. Lambert. Eagles working hard, clearing their lines. Grant turns away from Steve. Grant slurs the plate on. Still in possession. 
Steve's working hard. Steed rubs him. Steed goes through Andre. It's Kwame Steed. Has to go back as a Queen of Grand recovers. It's the Shields. The Shields. Working hard as ever. Ball played into Brangman. Davis. All he's had to do is clear his lines. Beans gets there. Sean Brangman is replaced by the Burley Mark Steed. And the John Simmons replaces Al Jimmy Zoo. It may be a little bit too late for the Devon Chicagos. By my clock here, there's only about 30 seconds in regulation time. It will look like fourth official Francis will put up the additional match time clock. It should be about four minutes of match play. He signaled three minutes of additional time. Steed, first play into Lejean Simmons. Eagles clear their lines again. The Cougars have less than three minutes to get a goal to win their first FA Cup title. And all the boys in yellow and blue have to do is keep the score line at 2-1. Victory in by Cougars. Headed across. Swan battling in the midfield with Tucker. Franks. Cougars still trying to play their way into the match. Seymour lobs one into Steed. There by De Shields. De Shields working hard. Ball spread out wide to Butterfield. Butterfield's in a lot of the balls today. Sends one in again. Andre gets there. Grant clears his line. Seymour. Bean there, beautiful play by Seymour Drew the legs of Bean. Franks. Lobs one. Looking for Simmons. Lejean Simmons. Short of stature. Never going to get there. Cox. Flips one in. Ball goes into the net. 2-2. Two -two. Smith by Seymour. 2-0. And to end action. What a play. Cox sends a long ball into the 18. It look harmless, and it is. Trying to find out the goal scorer. It looks as D'Amico Cotterton got there. 2 0 with less than one minute to play in injury time. Oh, what a match here at the, at the National Sports Center. What a match. The Eagles will now be wondering how did they give this game away with less than a minute to go. It's the boys in green and white from across the way. The Ole boys who now have captured the two all, have gained the momentum. And we see now the back line of the Eagles by having given up that goal. Cramp First half of overtime has kicked off now. Fifth, Eagles playing from left to right and Cougars playing from right to left. What an exciting initial 90 minutes with both teams having concluded the match 2-0 after Eagles having gone ahead 2-0 in the first half. And Cougars coming back to claw it on almost the final kick of the match, 2-2. So the tale of two halves would seem that the Devonshire Cougars are the Eagles. I mean, the Devonshire Cougars now have the momentum. And the first corner, the every time, has been awarded to the Cougars. Kwame Steed still running, giving it his all, trying to redirect it towards the goal. 
And now we'll see if Eagles can regroup and bring the same intensity they bought in the first half. But at the moment, I would say it looks like Cougars will be more likely to get a third goal. First time they may look to actually go ahead into the match. Steed finding Brangman. Brangman against Andrade. Ball float across the box. And Lejean Simmons, the substitute, the final substitute of the day for the Cougars. Almost gets his small body, drawing himself at the ball. Wins the corner, second corner in succession for the Cougars. As I have already alluded to, it's the Cougars who have now taken the match under control. And it's Brangman. Sets another cross. Missed by Steve. Again. This is about the fourth time that the Cougars have been on the edge of the goal. We're in the six-yard box and not have been able to contact to redirect the ball towards goal. But the team that creates a lot of opportunities such as they have done will always be in it to score. And that's what the Cougars have done. They created about 10 chances to score two. And all what matters is that they have another shot to win their first FA Cup title. Bean and Frank still at it. Frank's got the first. He sees the ball good on the play of his chest. Lambert. Lambert having had a steady match at left back. Will be asked to continue his fine form. And Connaughton now signals the intent of the Cougars. Battersby. Turns away from Steed. And Steed, the Barley Steed, having drawn himself at the ball. Having just come on as a substitute. It's being put in the books of O'Brien. So it's substitute Steed. Mark Steed, number 20. Having been on the pitch for less than five minutes. It's already received a yellow card, so you have to be wary of that, not to get sent off. Davis flips on it to the box, flicked over, and I believe that Steed got his head into the ball, with his shields, number 18, after Torrey Davis floated a beautiful ball, good height, Brangman was able to just see it narrowly go over the crossbar, Brangman. The Shields, strong youngster, good central hill to midfielder. Seymour, having not done too much wrong except giving away the second goal of the match. The Queen of Grand looking to be released by Davis. Swan, Swan not having had a real influential appearance thus far. Still wondering why Coach Thompson had actually brought on Swan. Cox. And Drade allows it to run out of play. And a book drove in a water to the Eagles. And then we are approaching the first five minutes in. Additional time, over time. Draw in. Brangman against Andrade. Brangman gets across Andrade. Still Brangman. Battersby. Brangman over the back of Battersby. Easily seen by match official O'Brien. Battersby have had a good match thus far. In contention for man of the match. Lambert, the Shields, the Shields gives the ball away, Simmons looking for Steed, Femeni Steed dribbles into the box, just allows the ball to run away from him and requires full attention of Seymour who is on his ground again, he may be having cramp, could be a wise tactic of the Devonshire Cougars bench to place him in directly on Seymour as he looks like he'll be unable to last the full 
30 minutes. Probably expecting the match to have been over by now. Shakur Smith heads. Have it back by Steve. Lejean Simmons. Miscued the ball. Simmons full of potential, another promising youngster. Having originally applied his trade at Denny Town and moved to Damsha Kukus, where he's seen lots of play. Coach Thompson in heated discussion with O'Brien. O'Brien signaling for Thompson to take his place back onto the bench. And Thompson hills his ground where he is rightly able to stand in the 18 yard line. Swan. Swan unable to keep the ball. Steed always wants to hurt up the play. Cardington. Dribbles in between the two. The Shields pulls him down. Yellow water to the shields. Approximately nine minutes to play in the first half of overtime. So both sets of players must be mindful that there have been quite a few yellows handed out today. Any additional yellows could see your team end up with 10 men, which would make it more difficult for them to actually play the full match out. Coach Thompson signaling some instructions and Steed, Dago Steed, experienced veteran, former outstanding player of the Devonshire Cougars, giving instruction to their teams. Shakur Smith, Cardington, guilty of the handball, pushed off the ball by Smith, Swan. Swan leaves it for Davis. Davis taking his time to the ball, the veteran. Eagle supporters coming back into the match. Having been shot, Sakinish Davis floats one in. The Queen of Grand tried to redirect it. Swan. Brangman. Punches it towards Steve. Davis. Trying to send the play down the line. A beautiful day here at the Sports Centre. The sun is still shining, a beautiful Bermuda day. Both sets of supporters have been able to voice their support for their favourite team. And irregardless of the outcome, all here can say they've written a very entertaining match, which is far from over. Aquino Grand. So Darius Cox come back and recover. Devonshire Cougars has a play on the ground. Eagles are not aware of that. Be wise for Eagles to kick the ball out of play. But Cougars also decide to play on. The youngster, Steve takes control of the ball. Looking to find Butterfield. Butterfield's always going to be beaten. There's still a player down on the far side. Looks like it's Jesse Seymour, the left back, who's had a good match. Down on the far side. Looks like he's holding his left knee. Drills off the field. It's in serious agony. Cougars now are unable to make any further substitutions. We'll play with 10 men until Seymour returns on the field, if he's able to return. Ball beats Frank. Bean. Bean. Unable to get there. Smith. Smith's in a possession with Franks. Franks. Smith still there. Corner, good hustling by Smith. It looked as if Franks would have gotten the ball away. But Shakur Smith, the substitute, fresh legs, speedy player. And it's good to see Seymour come back on the field so this match could be played 11 v 11. Davis sends one. 
High and too far. Hilt his hair down, but the veteran is used to making the odd occasional mistake and does his job and drifts back into the middle of the park. With now less than five minutes to play in the first 15 minutes of overtime. Still 2-2. Two -two. Cougars having clawed their way back into the, ma into the match. The boys from the Dan after the Eagles race to a 2-0 lead. Steve. Bean. Bean is being isolated at the moment every time he gets the ball. Too many Steve. Dribbles. Wants to shoot. Miss kicked the ball. Could cause serious injury when your full weight of the ball goes to kick it and you miss it. Would be wise for Cougars to kick the ball out so he gets some medical attention. Kick the ball out of play. Wisely done by the Cougars keeper. Steed somehow does recover. Again. Jean Simmons. O'Brien awards the Drovian to Davenshire Cougars. I know Cougars should have. Eagles should have drawn the ball back since the Cougars goalkeeper did kick the ball out of play due to injury. And Cougars have kicked the ball out of play for the Eagles on a few occasions. It's all about good sportsmanship. Irregardless if we are playing for the FA Cup. Davis back to Battersby to Davis. Davis turns away. Caught in possession. Battersby slips. Seymour taken out by the Burley. Burley seed. Steve Lockie, that could have been in the second yellow card. I think if he does it one more time, O'Brien will not pull away. Now, the shoots. Punches are wide to Grant. Grant gets her. Grant's in the possession. Grant shoots. Races his shot. Clips the heels of Cox. And now it's a corner for the Eagles. With less than two minutes and 20 seconds in the first half of overtime, here at the National Sports Center, is still being entertained 2 0 between the Devonshire Cougars and Devonshire. Thompson Eagles and Devonshire Cougars. Damon Swan, but Steed pulls away. Pulled down on the area by Davis. Davis gets a yellow. It seems as if the match is going to probably end with one team having 10 and the other 11. It seems like every play on the pitch is being booked for a yellow card at the moment. We now have Kwame Seed who is hobbling here. Kukus would not like to miss his influence. Hopefully he can shrug it off. Holding his hands on his knees. Brangman kicks. And Drake climbs. Steed tries to barely his way through the defense. But it's Davis, the veteran. Smith. Davis again. Steed turns away from Grand. Always impressed with Steed. Midfield maestro to Brangman. Brangman looking for the barley Steed. To Manny. Turn. So Manny C tried to spin off Raheem the Shields. Raheem indicated there was no contact, but O'Brien in closeness to the ball. In the case of a free kick, approximately 20 yards, 21, 22 yards in the middle of the goal. As we are now coming to the closing seconds of the first half of injury time. It looks like D'Amico Connaughton is going to take a try at this one. What would it be if Cougars were to go up 3-2 with 15 minutes to go? Connaughton shoots, tries to place it through the wall as he sees that they jump. Handball by Connaughton. And just on the stroke of the first half of 15 minutes, it's still Cougars 2, Eagles 2.
We'll be back to you shortly with the start of the second half of overtime. This is Cal Blankadel here for Bermuda Sports Network with Lamone Simmons standing in for Mike Shaw. Man, Tassin, Tassin, still her. I'm gonna talk. Still 2 2 between the Cougars and the Eagles here at the National Sports Center. Second half of overtime. Eagles were close to claiming their first FA Cup victory about one minute and 30 seconds away when the Cougars were able to claw back into the match and score the equalizing goal. It's Swan, goes all the way back to Thomas. With the Barley Steed playing up front. Looking to be the provider as he does not have the legs to drift away from his direct opponent. And it's Lejean Simmons drifting out in the 18. Followed closely by Lambert. Still full of excitement here. One of these two teams will be carrying their first FA Cup trophy back. Rewriting the history books for their club. And as Brangman gets in front of Battersby, but unable to keep it in play. And it's less than 15 minutes to play here in the second half of overtime. This would be a match if it went into kicks from the penalty mark. Cox plays it out to Simmons, the youngster, drifts away from Lambert, still in possession. Lambert recovers and puts in a strong challenge. Cox to Butterfield. Simmons, looking pretty confident out there, all of 17 years of age. Guilty of giving the ball away. It's now Lambert who will take the draw in for the Eagles. Smith. Smith finds Bean. Steed. Steed. Oh, miss kick. Steed will rifle it. Steed shoots all over. Steed having been fortuitous of the miss kick by Battersby manages to get into the 18 yard box sees Thomas coming off his line but as just he's just about to rifle his shot loses his footing sets it high over the bar that would have been 3-2 for the Cougars and possibly the winner Cougars haven't been unlucky in front of girl all day they should have sealed this match on many occasions with Alji Zoo, but he did not have his day in the field. Strong challenge by Brangman on the shields, seen there by O'Brien. And O'Brien looks like he'll hand out another card. There are not too many players on the pitch today who have not received a yellow. It's been a very fair but strong tackling match. And it's the Shields who's being treated by Maddox Battersby. Instructions being given by fourth official Francis. players are coming to the touchline to be refreshed. Really 
and there'd be additional time. O'Brien would have stopped his clock to allow the injured De Shields to be treated. It looks like he's okay and that he'll return to the pitch. Steed tripped up by Swan. Again, today O'Brien has kept up with the match. Good performance by the man in the middle as far as positional play. Butterfield into Tumani Steed. Taken off the ball by Swan. Swan being used for his size. Bean. Steed again. Lays it off to Cotterton. Cotterton in the box. Goes down. Penalty waved away by O'Brien. We have the president of Derbyshire Cougars Clark out of his seat looking for the penalty in disbelief that it was not given. <laughs> and as I said earlier, all sets of supporters can be happy today here at the Sports Centre to be entertained by both teams, regardless of the outcome. Been a good entertaining match of two halves. Steed. Steed using his size to his advantage. Drury into the Eagles. Lambert to the Shields. Cleared by Battersby. Cotterton tries to find Steve. Swan. Intercepted by Seymour. Seymour having recovered from his initial knock. Lambert chased by Lejeune Simmons. Sends the ball high and wide into the stands. And as the influence is Mark Seed, the substitute who is now having a lot of influence on this match. His size is causing problems for the Eagles back line. To Manny Steed, to Lejeune. The Shields, following closely, gets there, clears the ball. Franks. But a few. With about 10 minutes left, Will Thompson and Dago Steed thinking about who may be taking kicks from the penalty mark. Steed again. This size is causing problems. Looking to turn and shoot. Directly at Thomas. Thomas gives the ball back to Cougars. Butterfield. Seen a lot of the ball this half. Steed heads it back across goal. Seymour. Thomas manages to keep it from going out for a corner. Thomas decides to kick. Grant. Frank sends a one time back. Davis to Andre Swan B Lambert lucky to get a second touch of the ball looked like he had miscontrolled it initially followed by Simmons didn't possession plays a good ball to Davis Davis 25 yards easily collected by Brangman no danger Brangman races and kicks. Andre back into Swan. Swan seeing more of the ball. Grant lets it run across his body. And it's Seymour who clears. Approximately six to seven minutes left before we talk about kicks on the penalty mark. And then it will be who has the calmest nerves, Swan. Cotterton now playing as deep as a holding midfielder with Kwame Steed having been pushed up to lead the nine. Steed looking for his brother, Mark Steed. Swan unable to muster any energy to get there before Steed. Swan having come on as a substitute and Steed still full of passion and energy. 
Back to Cox. Cox sends one into the box again. Steed heads it over the bar. Looks high into the sky and just looking, axing for that third goal. He's done a lot of work today. And if the Cougars are successful, it will definitely be Steed who will be voted the MVP. For me, Steed, that is. Thomas. Kicks are falling short the second half. Making it easy for the Cougars to counter attack. Cox. That is me. Cox. Cox. Steed. Seymour. Coddington. Swan being called for the foul into the chest of Coddington. 25 yards out, approximately in the middle of the pitch. Coddington took the initial kick earlier. Looks like Cox is taking the responsibility. Cox has a good shot on him. Looking to rifle it to the top of the net. Cox shoots into the wall, shoots again. Ooh. Somehow went through a maze of players without being deflected. Could have easily turned into the net. As Thomas once again takes the kick. Kicks have been short as of late. Should be looking to get the ball at least over the half. Had it back by Cox. That is me. Allowing the ball to Bunce. Deshaun Simmons profits from that. He has into the 18. Battersby recovers. Butterfield. The Shield. Good hustle by the Shields. And again, a good tackle by Coddington, showing his experience. Maintains possession. Tries to find Brangman. Seymour. Seymour trying to shoot the ball on the run. Always going to be a little bit too technical for someone of his ability. Not known for his goal scoring technique. Bean. Having moved from the Red Devils, the Rams, to the Eagles. And it's Shakur Smith, no, Aquino Grant, who was brought down by Franks. Steed being treated here on the near side for an injury. It looks like cramp. Ball goes. Ball goes into Brangman. And it's Steed out to Simmons. Out to Steed. Brand keeps the ball. Davis. Plays in being. Will be and seal it, given offside. Eagles players and bench all demonstrating to the AR. And now, and after 90 minutes, that great. What a match here today at the National Sports Center. Initially 2-0 to the Eagles in the first half, 2-2 two -two Claude. And now again to have kicks from the penalty mark. It's going to be Lamont Brangman, the substitute. He's going to be ready to take the first kick of the match. It's Marcel Thomas on his goal line. This is going to be who the kicks will be taken, and either the Devonshire Cougars or Somerset Eagles will be the winners of the first FA Cup final for either team to write history in their club's football career. Brangman against Thomas. 
1-0 to the Cougars. It's Lamont Brangman who starts off this. Kicks from the penalty mark. And now the pressure's on the Somerset Eagles. We see Bean, Keyshawn Bean walking. It's a long walk from the center of the pitch to the penalty. Step. And the pressure will be on him to keep the score line even and to equal it. Thomas beaten easily by Brangman who kept his calm and cue and composure. And it's now being against Brangman. Bean looks to be out there with a potential limp. Brangman waving his arms on the goal line. It's Bean. Bean shoots and scores to the right, to the left of Brangman. So it's now 1-0. Both kicks have been placed with confidence. And we see Jesse Seymour coming forward. Seymour had an outstanding match and went down what would look like to be an injury would have taken him out of the match. But now he'll be asked to keep the Cougars in front, the boys from across the way. And Thomas standing calm on the line. Seymour taking a long time to compose himself. Sometimes that's an omen that you're not as confident. But again, the number 23 shoots, places it to the right of Thomas and scores. It's now 2-1 to the Cougars. Jugs back. And we have Swan. The substitutes are beginning a lot of responsibility today as Swan steps to the line. And he haven't been on the pitch late in the match in regulation and having played the full 30 minutes of overtime. It's now Swan against Brangman. Brangman playing mind games here at the Sports Center. And it's Swan. Swan taking his time to place the ball. Swan steps up, shoots straight to Brangman. Easy. And it's now the Cougars who have destiny in their own hands. Brangman races away. And it was Swan, the substitute, given the responsibility to take the kick. Placed it hard, but straight at Brangman. And now we have Cox. Having traveled all the way from university to come back home to win the first FA Cup for the boys from the Dan. Has the opportunity to make it 3-1. Cox places the ball. Thomas again stands on the line. Cox shoots. Hits the post, but the ball hits the back of the net. It's now Cougars have all the luck, all the luck yet. Eluded El Jimizu early in the match. It's now been placed. Well, it's been transferred to the entire team. And we have here Skipper Seymour. We had a good outstanding match today. Looking to keep his team in contention. This is now 3-1 to the Cougars. Seymour steps up. Seymour takes his pick quickly. Shoots. Scores. Ways to be Brangman's mind games. It's now 3-2. Looks like Kaiwan Franks is coming up to take the next kick, which will be the fourth kick for Kuis. Kaiwan Franks. Thomas walks from post to post, finds himself in the middle. Franks steadies himself. Cougars is singing in the background. Frank shoots, scores, go. It's now 4 2 to Cougars. We have De Shields who's going to have to place this kick into the back of the net. All of Cougars' kicks from the penalty mark have been convincing, even the one from Cox. The ricocheted 
from the post but was well and firm hit. It's the Shields being told to place the ball on the spot by O'Brien. O'Brien is telling him where to place the ball. This may unsettle the youngster. It's a lot of time being spent to find the, the mark. O'Brien should walk to the mark and point it out to him, which he does. Would this have unsettled the Shields? It's Brangman on the line. Bunsen, the Shields steps up to kick. Shoots, scores. The youngster kept his nerve and composure, showing great leadership here. As the continuous searching for the spot, which should have been pointed out by O'Brien if he could not find it, but he kept his calm and composure. And it's now Coddington. Coddington to take the fifth kick. This kick, if scored, should seal it for the Cougars. All Cuddington has to do is place his ball into the back of the net, and the Devonshire Cougars will be the 2009 Tayon FA Cup champion. It's Cuddington shoots, scores, and it's Cougars who are the champions. Cougars have won their first FA Cup title. It's all Cuddington. Cougars have won. Great game for the Cougars.